Hello there, this is Daniele from Toolchefs and in this video I'm going to show you the new navigation 3D module. So here in my scene I have some fishes, they are just uh, swimming straight. I've also changed their frame rate using the, another metadata module so that uh, uh, they go a bit faster. Uh, in the clip reader I activated the behave 3D option so that they can move in, the, in 3D space. Now I'm gonna attach the navigation 3D and I'm gonna go to the module attributes here and uh, uh, go in the navigation 3D. So here what you can see, uh, as you can see, we have uh, uh, some modes. So we have a target uh, mode, target position, uh, which means that the agents basically will always try to go towards um, the target position, which is zero. Of course, this is not the greatest uh, simulation, but of course you can change this one. So for instance, if uh, uh, I just change it to be uh, the position of the first null object that I have created in my scene, uh, which is basically this one over here. And if I press play, the agents will actually try to go uh, and reach that uh, target point. Um, and of course, as soon as they pass it, they will try always to come back and reach it again. Uh, I'm gonna change the max turn angle to three, uh, just for this video, so that basically they sh they, they're not moving, they're not um, turning uh, too sharp. Um, but of course you can, uh, if you want to have multiple target positions, so one per agent, uh, or anyway, randomize a little your uh, simulation, you can add overrides for the target position. Another thing that you can do is that you can also uh, activate this option, find new target point on reach, which means that the agents will try to find a new point uh, within, uh, let me activate the debug mode, within this uh, sphere. Uh, you see this uh, pink sphere. Uh, and uh, uh, basically they, uh, that sphere is basically as a center, the uh, group position and the radius is this one, so 500. You can change the center to be the center of mass, which in this case is actually the same as the group position because this is like a sphere layout. So the, it's actually the, yeah, the same as the uh, group position. Otherwise you can use agent position. I'm gonna show you in a second what that option does. So if I press play, now as soon as they reach the position, uh, the target position, they try to find a new uh, target point and they are trying to reach that. Um, if you use agent position, it's best to set like a lower uh, radius. This is because the sphere, at the time when they um, reach the target point, the sphere is, be is basically the center of the sphere is actually the actual current position of the agent, and that the radius for that sphere is this value here. Um, the agents are with the, they're reaching the target basically for atoms when they are within this distance from the target position. Anyway, if I press play now, you see that the agents uh, will find a new target point and they will try to reach that. Uh, if you use this method, you, you could find your agents, uh, you know, uh, being, uh, uh, you know, getting further and further from each other as the simulation goes. And this is because, uh, again, that uh, target, the new target point is uh, based on the sphere that has a center, the current position of the agent, and basically they don't have any knowledge of the other agents uh, at that point. Uh, other things that you can do, you can provide a target, a target metadata name. So if you have, a, a, if you type here anything, and this is the name of a, of a vector three metadata that exists on the agent, uh, that uh, position is gonna be used instead of uh, uh, like the settings that you have here. So yeah, like you can of course uh, change the, um, uh, the name here if you want and set a valid vector three metadata. Another thing that you can do is that you can set a metadata when the agents uh, actually reach um, a target point. So for instance, you could type here a, a metadata name, which could be a double int or boolean. And uh, this would be the value that uh, that metadata will be set when the agents reach their target point. You can change the seat if you want to randomize a little bit um, the simulation and also you can change the velocity threshold. This is basically the, so if the agents, uh, the velocity of the agents uh, is uh, less than 0 0.5, then uh, the agents actually will be ignored by this module. Okay, so now what we can do is also we can use a random target point. Uh, is exactly the same um, um, behavior that you had before with the target po position uh, after they reach the target. So anyway, uh, the only difference is that they, they, they find a random point when they start the simulation and they will keep doing that forever. Um, Cool. So anyway, so the other options like center of mass and agent position work in this case as well. And the last uh, thing is the target position sequence. So here what we can do is like we can add a um, few target points.
uh, and if I rewind now we'll see that the agents will actually point towards the first sphere and then the second sphere and then the third sphere and again they will keep going like this uh, forever basically so we have done some optimization for this module so as you can see uh, they are uh, pointing to a point not actually the center of the sphere but a point on this sphere if I disable this uh, uh, option find optimal target point they will actually point to the to the center of the sphere but in this way uh, basically we are trying to uh, keep the agents uh, um, apart uh, you can of course even if you increase the target radius of uh, the um, targets uh, you actually see that the agents are actually going to be uh, um, you know uh, th their target points are actually uh, further than before um, and as you can see basically what they try to do is they always try to find the same position that they had on the next sphere so they, they could still um, be crossing paths but uh, anyway, they, what they're trying to do again is always to try the same target point uh, on the next sphere. Actually, let me increase a little bit here the frame range. Okay, so uh, that's that. Um, what we can do also is we can add a flocking uh, in the case you want to keep your agents, uh, uh, you know, like uh, at a distance. You don't want them to cross path. Uh, so what we can do is we can go here and we can go flocking at behavior. Just gonna pull it up uh, and just gonna make sure that the uh, max turn angle yeah three is okay here and the search radius 100 is fine so if i press play now the agents uh, uh, will actually uh, not just uh, uh, try to reach the next point but also we try to uh, pull each other to keep each other together so they don't lose formation if you don't activate the flocking of, of course they they will uh, they will actually eventually uh, lose the formation because the uh, the idea is that the, um, you know they are just trying to reach a target they don't really care about keeping the formation uh, let me actually change the uh, target radius to 50 like it, like it was before so we see a little bit more the action of the flocking uh, when you have the flocking on it might be that the agents won't actually never reach their target point but with the flocking they uh, you know they they will eventually uh, at the second round uh, come back and reach the, the target point as you can see there actually let me pause it uh, sorry wrong button let me rewind again Okay, and this is all for this video. Thanks for watching.